<laughs> Hi, folks. Hey. Episode <laughs> six. Woo. Yep. Yeah, we're two weeks into a second month of doing this. We're probably going to... Oh, no, I'm not going to go down that road. We don't need anyone finding the first attempt. God. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was not good. All right, so episode six, Water. Part, Part one. one. Hey. Hey, hey, yeah. Nice. Is this a mirror? Are we just, like, talking to each other? I, we're, we're the same person. Yep. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you can't yep. just look at us. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking identical. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, okay. Water. Part one. Yes. We had a bit of a talk on if we were going to do this in two parts or all at once. We decided to keep it short and do it in two separate parts. So that's what we're doing. Yep. So it's going to be two parts, but definitely not as long as fire was. Yeah. Yeah. If it is as long as that, I'm going to be very surprised. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I apologize because you want to keep this one short. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Oh. <laughs> Let's fire away here. All right. So water. I mean, our bodies are made up of Essentially, almost all water. We mm -hmm. are walking water. Water walkers. Ooh, that, that sounds like a cool movie. Or a TV it show. Is a, it is a movie. It is? It is a movie. Yep. Yep. It's a, uh, it's a Canadian film by Bill Mason, who's oh. like this really big uh, canoe enthusiast, and he made a movie called water walker that was kind of a really big inspiration for getting a bunch of people out into quetico national park and a bunch of other national parks up there just battling really that's not at all what i thought it was about i thought it'd be about like they're aliens made out of water and no nope. like and like or the walking dead but it was like in the ocean instead of on land that's not as cool. I'm sorry. No. It sounds almost as bad as, uh, what was it? Werewolf Cop. Oh, God. <laughs> and they made two of them. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, I'm just kidding, Werewolf Cop. Very funny film. We're For not laughing wrong. with you. We're laughing at you, though. So. <laughs> but, All right, um, pretty soon this is going to be as long as fire. Yeah, we keep getting sidetracked. Oh, jeez. Um, so, oh man, water. <laughs> We're made up of a lot of it. Just your your body knows when you need it. If you're thirsty, drink something. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go off of the urine color. That like more yellow it is, the more dehydrated you are, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. And it, the relatively good rule of thumb is. You know, to keep that urine pretty clear. Hardos will say it's got to be as clear as the water you're putting into yourself. And I mean, okay, I guess you could do that if you kind of just like take two chugs every 10 minutes or something. But yeah, that's a bit excessive. <laughs> yeah. And well, and, and when you're going on these trips or when you're in a survival situation or something, how the hell do you have that much water to drink? You don't. Unless you're just slurping it right out of the lake or the river or the stream or mm. wherever you're at, swamp. And we'll get into why that's sometimes not a bread idea in the second part. Right. So just, in, in my opinion, what I do is I just drink enough water to where the urine looks healthy. I guess is the, the word for it. Like um like a light beer color. How did I know you're gonna go to beer? <laughs> I mean clear, you're good. Yellow is mellow. 
dark yellow. Uh, I thought there was a saying. Um, uh oh, red, go to the hospital. Great oh. saying. <laughs> that flowed off the tongue. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it flowed like water. Oh. Ooh, got him. <laughs> But like you said, okay. if you're in a survival situation or just out in the woods and, you know, on a hiking trip and you want some extra water and you're not at a campground, how do you find it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, obviously with, you know, life and, and everything of us being in living in houses or apartment buildings or at campgrounds or going to a gas station or wherever you're at, there's always going to be a faucet everyone's aware of this, that there's no faucets out in the woods. And if you do find a faucet in the woods, it's probably really freaking old and it doesn't work anymore. So you can it just does, rule that. I'd still be wary just because of how what those pipes are made out of. Yeah, yeah. Good old lead water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I but feel- generally thinking about it right off the bat first impressions of the land are going to be a very good indicator of where water would be if you have a map on you even better if your phone is hooking up to the satellites and you pull out google maps even better because then that's going to show you exactly where the water is if you don't have any of those things let's realize that gravity is a thing Sometimes in stressful situations, we forget that gravity exists. Water is always going to travel downhill. Yep. So if you're standing on top of a hill and it's gradually sloping down, go down the slope and see if there's anything down there. If you can't visually see it, go down. Guarantee at least the ground's going to be a little bit softer, a little bit squishier down there. chances are you're probably going to be able to see the water long before you would have to go and and test the squishiness of the ground. But if you don't visually see water, other than just knowing go downhill, you can also do another little bit of botany going on. Um, Learn a few specific plants that just thrive in wetlands like cattail. If you see a grove of cattails at the bottom of the hill, there's definitely going to be water there. Why? Because cattails aren't going to be growing on the side of a hill or at the top of a hill or anywhere where water isn't prominent. Cattails are going to be pretty much where where somewhere is flooded, it will be there. At least for most of North America and everybody in that range of latitude. Also, so between, willows are a good one. Willows as well, yes. I mean, yeah. think of just the big giant umbrella looking thing with weird skinny arms um oh that one tree from harry potter that beats the crap out of the car Uh uh-huh that's a willow (laughs) yeah there'll be water nearby (laughs) yep there was water nearby in that scene i think i don't know we should ask steve yeah we should should. (laughs) it was a live interview (laughs) you only got one question (laughs) Was there water? What's going on with all this water and movie references? I don't know, a man. A lot of it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we need yeah. to start a movie review podcast. No. Well, <laughs> if anyone's watching this right now, let us know if you'd want to see a movie review. No, they they left. Yeah, we probably did. About, That's fair. I'd leave too. They left when we were talking about shipping ships. <laughs> Well, that, we show I didn't start at that point. Oh, I thought it did. What? No. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I anyway. hope it didn't. 
Because that was a cluster right there. Yeah, it was. Um, so, yeah, that that's a, those are some good tips, Josh, on how to find water. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you get this. This is all you get. No. Nope. Pinky clap. It's the most sophisticated of all the claps. Is it? It is. Okay. I mean, when you drink a fancy drink, you gotta have the pinky out. Oh. If you clap with the pinky, it's sophisticated. Right, right. So, Makes sense to me. Well, yeah. Um, so what about, you know, you still can't find water. You, you use these tips, not finding those plants. Say you're in the desert. There ain't no water. What now? Just pray for rain. Who knows when that's going to happen. Find a Walmart. Well, you're lost. But there's a cactus. There we go. Mm -hmm. Be um, not from the desert. Haven't spent much time. Don't just start whacking any old cactus. Do a little bit more yeah. research. Mm-hmm. Find I know. the right cactus and also I know. Of yeah, things. I think the uh, is it the prickly pear. If I remember right, the prickly pear. Well, the prickly pear has that like almost like a giant strawberry that grew. It's like a red fruit that comes out of the top of it. Yeah, <laughs> those are edible. Uh, I'm really hoping I'm saying this right, but is, I believe it like a the, flower. Well, I believe the barrel cactus is the one that you can cut oh, into. That and, sounds familiar. I think you're right. the water in the barrel cactus is uh, drinkable. You can do that, but I believe there are some species of cacti. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Cacti. There are species of cacti that the fluid in them does have some sort of, I don't want to say poison, but Hallucinate? they have some chemicals within it that I believe aren't very good for you. So if you live in Arizona or New Mexico or Texas or Southern California or wherever you may be where there's cactus, cacti. like even Eastern Washington, Oregon, do research on your local cacti and make sure you know how to identify them, which one has edible fruits, which ones you can drink the fluids from, and which ones you cannot. Also, because be the wary. two of us in the Midwest are not going to be responsible when your ass gets sick for drinking a cactus, which we we don't have access to. Yeah. So. <laughs> also, be wary. Oh, water fell over. Um, <laughs> be wary of where you are, just because I know a few of them, few species, especially in certain areas, are protected. You don't want to go to jail because you trapped down a 200-year-old cactus. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think of that one. Yeah. That was a good one to throw in. Yeah. Hey, I got water. I can live. Oh, no, I'm going to jail. Yeah, the feds are on me now. <laughs> Crap. Yeah. Um, but with that, because, I mean, if you look at it, those plants are essentially, oh, in a tropical uh, area, the pitcher plant. That can hold water as well. Um, there's also, you know, going to be probably bugs in there. So maybe look before you just start glugging them down they're not any uh it's not like you know nature's bush latte right check them out um also uh you can get water from dew there's a bunch of grasses or moss you mm -hmm. just squeeze some good old moss water out that yeah was i've done the that first before mountain dew. Uh -huh. i've done that before or if you have a piece of clothing uh grass early morning just bring it around mm -hmm. squeeze it out yeah like tie it around your ankles and then just go for a walk until that fabric gets saturated and then just squeeze it in yep and then just walk around some more and 
bing bong boom you got some water mm -hmm. but on that note well you're, you're planning a trip and you know you're gonna want to have some water with you mm -hmm. how do you carry it well you'd be like Barry grills and just carry some snake skins with you i mean yeah <laughs> you could could if 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 you were going on a trip and you happen to only have snake skins on you somehow i guess that'd be what you had to do uh but, obviously you you completely ignored the entire planning for the trip properly and <laughs> all of that no the person did they, they planned with snake skins yeah i guess <laughs> that was the plan all along josh okay I missed that part of the plan. <laughs> yep. Or you can be a normal person and have a water bottle. Yep. I got, where is, oh, mine's in here. You said I got you were two. prepared. Oh. I got two go-tos. Yeah. You gotta show me up. Dick. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, I don't know where my bottle is. I don't have it. I don't care. Just show it. Okay. <laughs> Number one. When, and really the, the the only thing that for the most part I'm concerned about is as long as that thing's steel and don't 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 tell me that you are taking your uh, uh, hydro flask out and that's the only one you're gonna need because that thing's double walled it's insulated yeah. and if you put that thing in the fire to boil your water that bitch is gonna blow up Yep. So don't do it. Hydro Get a sink flask, wall. Um, was it Yetis? And your Stanleys. Mm -hmm. Um Under Armour's got some. Uh Camelback has some. Mm -hmm. Most of all the steel ones that you see in the store, like Cabela's, Dick Sporting Goods, any sporting goods stores, are double walled. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not even say it. Yeah. Um, necessarily on the bottle, but you can find that information. Don't put it in the fire. It's a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. It's only a, it's a single wall. Like this is it. It's not insulated at all. It doesn't keep anything cold. It doesn't keep anything hot. hot for you. What it does do is allows you. To continuously boil water, let it cool down, slam that shit, boil more water, let it cool down, slam it, and you can just keep going. And you're not dealing with an explosive sitting in the fire, yeah. which is a big benefit. That is. Another, another option that you have on the uh, – are we getting into filtration on this one? No, that's next week. Okay, then I'll ignore the next option. <laughs> that works um there's also i know a lot of people like the camelbacks mm -hmm. i personally don't just because if i'm gonna have my backpack i'm gonna have my backpack i don't yeah most of the ones nowadays come with you know the slots to put in the yeah, they got that the bladder, bladder but you... it uh -uh, not my style mm -hmm. could be someone yeah. else's go for it but no thank you i i i think they're very purpose driven yeah i haven't used my camelback in a while but when i have used it for specific things it has come out very useful like like when i would be doing a a longer distance bike ride or if I'd be going on a long run or something like that, it is nice to just have that camelback on. Now with the run, it's kind of a pain because you just got it sloshing around. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a lot more comfortable than like one of those. They got like these little joggers belts that have a frontal water utility filter. pouch. Yeah, um, camelbacks are a lot nicer to run in than those those things. Um, yeah. but as far as going out into the woods go, I don't know. I mean, 
if okay i I always worry about dropping my pack and the camelback inside of my backpack like in that sleeve pops now all my shit's wet yeah they are pretty durable i'll give them that but i mean they're also a pain to clean if you know dependent on i guess that's with a water bottle too um Mm -hmm. It's going to taste like plastic, which I personally kind of, you know, I don't like. Um, And it's just, I don't know, I feel like there's too many things to deal with and to think about and worry about compared to, I put water in a container and carry it. Mm -hmm. Bing, bong, boom, done. You know? And when it's empty, it's empty. I mean, I know... I think Survivor Man had an episode where he was able to boil water in a in a camelback. I think he boiled the water in it, but in the process it got a little pinhole in it. So once that camelback's empty, it's empty. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you had a single wall stainless steel container, once it's empty, you have the option to refill. Boil more. Right. Yeah. And if you're not worried about the whole sterilization thing, which we'll get into some other time next week, then you can just fill it up and keep trucking. Yeah. But so I guess now I feel like at some point we'll probably just do a whole specific gear episode on specific water items, like our own personal things we recommend. So we'll get into that later, but we'll just give you a brief kind of suggestion list on things to look at when you're going to get a water bottle. Mm -hmm. So first off, I just have this thing at home. I like it because it holds a lot of water and it's got a straw. (laughs) Personally, prefer that more than because it just, I miss my mouth. And then I spill all of myself. <laughs> so I like the straw option. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I know I'm a child. I like just being able to twist the lid off and just pound it. Yeah, but when I do that, it it runs through my mustache and then gets in my beard and then it gets that is wet. that is an issue. Yes, as I well. So if I, even if I'm I'm, you know, make the mouth, the water doesn't seal because there's hair blocking it. And then it uses it as like a ramp and then just gets my whole face wet. Yeah, you need to be a little bit like on the ball when it comes to like trimming your mustache and stuff for that. But even then, if you like throw it back too much, then it's still just going to catch on the hairs and just, you got to. Freaking handlebar water mustache going on down your chest, and yeah, that that yeah, I'll give that to you. That's not thanks, bud. Great. And no need to rip on the stash. It is beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm saying I got the same problem you too. You said if you aren't on point with the trim, I'm saying in general, uh, people with mustaches need to be on the ball as far as trimming that up to you know be able to drink anything with yeah or get a straw or just get a straw yeah uh i know we're gonna have some people hating on us about straws mm-hmm. this not me. is the only one that goes with this bottle it's not like a plastic okay it is plastic but it's not like a restaurant one that gets thrown away and then ends up in the ocean and kills the turtles it could I do have a but... thing with turtles though they keep on appearing in my dreams and attacking me, so. Well, yeah. damn turtles. <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyways, other water bottles. So, like Josh has been saying, the single, single wall metal water bottles. Perfect for if you need to boil stuff. I mean, hell, you could make food in it. If you yeah. really had to. Cook up some ramen in your water bottle. Yeah. You can make char cloth in them if you really want to. Could what? You can make char cloth in them if you really want to. Yeah. Just put a rock over the top of it. 
I've never done it because that sounds like a bitch and a half to clean. But yeah, because now it's all of the whole inside's charred. Just carbon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, can so do it. Yeah, I guess the water bottle depends on the purpose. I mean, mm-hmm. I know for like doing a big sporting event, you get the giant like. One of those Gatorade or Under Armour Five ones. gallon Gatorade things yep. with a tap on it. Yep. Yeah. Or, you know, you get just like a normal, this is, this does not have a size, what, like a 32 is probably the biggest, or a yeah, 64. This is a 32. Um, yeah. Like a 32, 64 is probably on the larger end. Um, you can just toss those in your backpack water bottle holders. Mm-hmm. Carry two of them, you're good to go for usually a day, maybe a day and a half. Yeah, you got half a gallon of water on you if you got yeah. two of these. Exactly. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. The 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 fancy Stanleys, Yeti, and all that have their purpose. If you know you want to carry coffee going to work, mm-hmm. why not? It's gonna keep it hot forever. Mm-hmm. Don't quote me; it won't be forever. It's just a really long time. Um, I will say, though, Yeti, what are you doing? So many <laughs> other brands offer the same exact quality and better designs, like color-wise and stuff, and you're charging an arm and a leg. Why do you got to sell dog dishes? That's idiotic. I don't uh, get uh, people that are going to be like, no, Yeti's the best. Man, nah, shut up. Get out of here. Buy a stand. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now, the the funniest thing from Yeti doesn't have to deal with water, but it does have to deal with drinking, is the the bottle opener. Oh, yeah, isn't it? The bottle opener is like a pound and a half, and it's too big to have on a keychain. It's physically too big to have on a keychain, and it'd probably snap your key if you put your key into the ignition, because it's just it's so heavy. And then on top of that, it's 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 like 45 bucks <laughs> for this bottle opener. <laughs> oh, and what's the deal with the Yeti backpack coolers? It's just those are weird. Oh, and the Yeti tote bag things? Why are you charging so much, man? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, and your coolers? All they got is thick plastic and some friggin' styrofoam. It's literally a minnow container with plastic around it. It's a minnow bucket. (laughs) Yeah. It's a ridiculous... Here you're in a minnow bucket. (laughs) Minnow bucket. I'm sorry, I just have a problem with Yeti. For their tote, I will give them credit on the zippers. Zippers are solid. The zippers are nice. That's about it. That's all your redeeming qualities. Yep. Zippers. Your zipper is good. <laughs> it's a nice zipper you got, Yeti. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, also, I will say the newer designs of the water bottles, like the twist off, it's like mm-hmm. a quick, just half, almost or like a three fourths quarter turn. Oh, okay. It's nice. You you did upgrade that. I'll give you that. Okay. Got like maybe. A point now because those were each half point. Um, the yeah. wine tumblers. Why? Just get get a regular glass. There's it's stupid. There's no top. It, the 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 cold can just what? Eh. <laughs> Other than that, Yeti, you suck. You're dumb. Go we have very it. strong opinions about your company on this channel. Yep, sorry about that. Um, sorry so we're looking that. for sorry. a sponsor, but <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, I mean, if you want to give us some, we'll show you how tough they are by like shooting them or running them over. Yeah, we'll we'll do some we'll do some tests on them. Yeah, we'll just try and destroy them and we'll do some content based tests on them. Yeah, and if they actually hold up. We'll give you back some points. Yeah. If they don't, we'll take some away. You're already not starting off well, so. <laughs> but anyways, uh, hey, Stanley. Yeah. I got. I don't know. I, 
it actually i think mine's in my truck right now it's got some coffee in it that i poured this morning and it's probably still hot it's been in the truck almost all day because i forgot about the coffee <laughs> so i opened it up when i got home after my six hour shift and i think it topped off at 11 degrees today and twist the top off and that thing was still steaming six and a half hours later in a very cold vehicle <laughs> in wisconsin mm-hmm. good old scotty yep oh i think that that's a, uh, about wraps it up otherwise after we'll go yeti rant, we huh after our yeti rant we have come yeah because if we keep on air i think we're gonna do a few more rants and I don't want that to turn into this video. We'll save <laughs> yeah. that for another video. Yeah. Like, There's a rant on everything. <laughs> uh, oh, great. The dogs are barking. Wonderful. Rubber ducks, rants, and raves. Ooh, that's a good ring to it. That'll be a good, good, good segment. Yeah. Segments in the yeah. future. That's because, something to play with. Yeah. So keep your uh, eyes and ears open, folks. Mm-hmm. But that concludes part one of our two-part water series. Let us know what you guys prefer as far as carrying water out to wherever you guys are going. That that includes if you are doing a road trip or you're doing some backcountry driving, some off-roading. What do you guys keep your water in in your vehicle? Do you have some sort of specific container that just works perfect for that or strapped onto your ATV or whatever? I'm just going to say one last thing. I already have the perfect thing for that. Just buy two or three one-gallon jugs from the gas station. They're like two bucks. Solid. Just keep them away from the gas pedal. That's all I'll say. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. But on that note, I'm Alec. And I'm Josh. <laughs> and this was Rubber Duck Outdoors. See you guys. Bye.